towards sudden destruction. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. So now that we've heard what the children of darkness are declaring with the peace and safety calls, let's look up and let's lift up our heads. What have the heavens been declaring all during this time too? Because we hold these both hand in hand and compare these and this will give us the best understanding that we are running out of time. We will see the day approaching because of the impetuous that our redemption draweth nigh. He is the one who said we will need to be looking up. This will give us the best clarity of where we are, the best understanding by looking on the celestial clock. There's a whole lot of other geopolitical events you can look at, and yes, definitely it's going to happen within the last generation. But apparently the best granular information is going to be by looking at the celestial clock. And so we've been looking at the particular segment along the line between Sagittarius, Capricornus, Aquarius, Pisces, and now Aries, where Jupiter is at. Understanding that this area between Sagittarius and Aries is known as the Celestial Sea, just because of all the aquatic creatures that are there. And this is so beautifully exemplified also on the last page of the Bible. And so again, as we look up and lift up our heads, we look at the last page of the Bible, which is written by the one who told us to look up, and we find his repeated promise, Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Surely I come quickly. Right with the beautiful pictures where he is pouring out the living water, the lamb on the right hand of the throne of God. All these beautiful pictures about our Redeemer. He is saying the promise, behold, I come quickly. And when we look up at the celestial clock, we can see this promise, a countdown of this promise by the Lamb of God who said, surely I come quickly. So this is what we've been watching, particularly since Peace and Safety Calls went out starting in early 2020, January 23rd, 25th. That is when Jupiter was at Sagittarius. But particularly Jupiter was at the star, which represents the arm, which is holding back the arrow of the drawn bow, which is pointed at Scorpius, his adversary. So we were talking about this even then, back in 2020, that the heavens seem to be pointing that the judgment is about to be released against his adversary. Jesus Christ is about to start making his enemies his footstool, which is the promise in Hebrews chapter 10, which we are told we will see that day approaching. What day? When Jesus Christ starts making his enemies his footstool. When he lets go of the arrow. When he releases it. When he opens up all those seals. And so in 2020, January 23rd, 25th, just when Jupiter the king, who is representing, who is our king, the Lamb of God, was at that point, that is when Trump put out his vision for peace plan. Definitely in the news because he had been building for it and teasing it for quite a while up until that point. But that's also when Corona really came onto the world scene too. Crowns, which Jupiter was right in line with the crown that is in Sagittarius. The southern crown right there. They are aware of the celestial clock, what time it is. So right when the celestial clock was showing that, that's what was also happening in the world. The peace and safety calls really went out. That whole subject in a very tumultuous subject area of the Middle East and Jerusalem and Israel, that whole subject really came to the forefront right at that exact same time. They focus on crowns, right when the celestial heavens were emphasizing and seemed to be underscoring that judgment's about to be released. And when you hear the cause of peace and safety, that means sudden destruction is coming. It is about to be released. And so we are very sobered by what we saw on the celestial clock, hand in hand with what scripture said. You would hear them say this. The cause of peace and safety, they went out at that time and with all the talk of COVID and just the way the world was really changing at that time too, there was definitely a sense that the music has stopped. Things are being put into effect by the enemy. Those who are of one mind, the throne of darkness, they are starting things and putting things into effect that are irreversible at this point. But we were also observing how the Lord was working right here on this channel, right here on the ground level, in our own lives, emphasizing the same thing. Because that is when he started the projects at the Brook Cherith, emphasizing and working toward bringing forth fruit, understanding we were running out of time, understanding sudden destruction is coming, and how we could be a light and leave a testimony, understanding that that sudden destruction is coming, understanding that the Lamb of God would be releasing judgments against the world, the preparations on the ground level. The way the Lord was working in our own lives was a direct result of us knowing the time, understanding the warnings that we would hear, understanding what we'd see on the celestial clock. All of it was going together. The Lord was reinforcing and giving so much wisdom about, yes, you are where you are supposed to be, your understanding of the celestial clock and the geopolitical situation. And so the Lord gave abundant wisdom and liberty with picking up the shovel and going forth what we could do, acting on prophecy. 
And you'll remember how the Lord was working so beautifully in 2020 and onward up until the day, really emphasizing he's been acting out through this channel, through these hands and feet, as we go forward for Jesus Christ, having a desire to draw nigh to him and hold fast to what his word says. He will also show us how it parallels in reality, give us a tangible understanding of the fulfillment of prophecy all around us. We are running out of time. How we can bring forth fruit. He will show us so many opportunities. And it is by going forward in faith. We have seen time and time and time again. As we go forward in faith with the steps that we can take. He will give further wisdom about what's on the celestial clock. But if we don't act on the understanding that he does give us. Why would he give us more? It is by going forward in faith and obedience. That is when he gives more wisdom and insight. And praise his name. He has been able to show us so much. Because we tune our ear and our heart and hands and feet to follow him and obey him first and highest above all else. Act on what he's showing us. And just like the good Samaritan, go and do thou likewise. But the same picture that's also exemplified on the last page of the Bible. The spirit and the bride say come. If our heart and life does not echo the spirit... You can have a head full of knowledge about prophecy. You can watch a thousand YouTube videos. But if your heart and life does not echo the spirit and the bridegroom, then you're not the bride. You're not the bride. You might be a guest at the wedding, but you're not the bride. And as we look up and lift up our heads, and we see the emphasis that our bridegroom, that our beloved, places on his heart, and we strive to draw nigh to him with a true heart, our hands and feet should echo his heart. And as we do so... We will be able to hear him even clearer because he will draw nigh in a special way when he sees that we desire to echo him. When the spirit and the bride say come, you'll see a beautiful relationship. And friends, that is what I've wanted to show you so much along this learning journey. Not just the celestial astronomical information. Not just the geopolitical happenings. I want to show you the closeness of a relationship with our beloved that you can only find with an intimacy when you go forward and you serve him first and highest above all else. When your ear is tuned to the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, when your ear is tuned to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will echo what Jesus Christ has said. And the more that we look into God's word, what he says, and we hold fast to what he said, then we will be able to hear him clearer because the heavens will declare the same thing that he said. It'll declare the same thing. And if we close our ears and heart to what the Spirit says or what Scripture says, we won't be able to see, we won't be able to hear like we should. And so, friend, here at this late hour, do not dismiss what the Lord is showing you by a tangible demonstration of His heart because He is the same one who gives wisdom along this learning journey, not me. He is the one doing the tangible demonstration. And if you dismiss his tangible demonstration, you will also miss out on his understanding that he's also trying to show you through demonstration. When we look up, when we lift up our heads, when we look into God's word, we will miss it because we are not hearing from him if we quench the spirit. And so it should stand out very strongly what was happening back at early 2020 when Jupiter, the king planet, was at Sagittarius Signaling and a releasing is about to happen of judgments against the adversary. But our Lord is showing mercy, even in the midst of wrath, and that he continues to hold the bow and not release the judgment until he has demonstrated mercy. And we've seen that on the celestial clock where he desires to show mercy, understanding that great wrath is about to come upon the world, but he will hold the arrow just a little longer. To give time to the bride to be the demonstration, to echo the bridegroom, to echo the spirit. And as we consider the path that Jupiter, the king planet, has traced in heaven since that point where Sagittarius is still holding the bow, still holding back the arrow from being released, everything that comes after that point up until the Lamb should give us great pause and soberness of what our job is while he continues to hold the arrow, while he continues to pause before he releases the judgments against the world. Our role is in this window, this grace window, this demonstration of mercy. The bride will see that window. The bride will echo the bridegroom's heart during that window. 
because the bride will understand what happens when the arrow is released when the seals are opened. And all that is going to be opened and released by the Lamb of God. And so as Jupiter has moved toward the left, the Lord gave great insight, praise his name, the insight into the tapestry of our redemption with the atonement sacrifice. So the Lamb of God was also the atonement goat sacrifice. He took on the form of the ones he came to redeem, took on the form of the fish. He came to make disciples, to be fishers of men, but he is also the high priest and mediator who pours out the living water because he is a living high priest. And beautiful understanding of the tapestry of redemption that should tenderize our heart to also echo the bridegroom. December 21st, 2020, just as the king planet was nearing and entering the celestial sea, starting the pictures which are portrayed on the last page of the Bible, you remember that was the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Right between those two, Sagittarius and the celestial sea. Understanding he is holding back the judgments for just a little longer. The emphasis on the king meets Saturn. Saturn representing time because it's the slowest moving planet visually. This definitely caught the world's attention and understanding that something significant is going on. We could look up, we could lift up our heads. And being on the celestial learning journey, like the wise men, having watched Jupiter so long, to see it come to a great conjunction emphasizing time, right after we've heard the cause of peace and safety. Understanding that from this point on, time was going to be very valuable. Time was going to be very short. Because judgment is about to be released, sudden destruction is coming upon the world. What are we doing? Are we redeeming the time? Such valuable time. But you also remember late 2020s when the Lord brought our attention at that exact same time to the account of the pilgrims and the parallels with the prophecy that Jesus Christ himself told the Jews, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. He had examined Israel, the prophetic state where they were now. They had rejected him largely, and he told them, he used the parallel of looking on the fig tree, examining it for fruit, and he found none. He found no reception to him as the Son of Man. And so he told them, you haven't brought forth the fruits that should be expected. You know this is the prophetic hour when the Messiah was coming. Daniel told you the weeks, this is the expected time. You should have known this. And yet here you are, you have no fruit, knowing the time. Where's your fruit? Because you have no fruit, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a Gentile nation that will bring forth the fruits thereof because I want to see the fruits. I want you to bring forth eternal fruits. We looked at the parallels with the pilgrims, the 400 years, because in December of 2020, that is when they observed the 400th anniversary of the pilgrims. On December 21st, the landing of the pilgrims at Plymouth Rock. And so, Lord has shown us some significant parallels, just like the children of Israel in the Exodus were in the land of Egypt, the strangers in the land for 400 years, and then they were brought out, and then that land was judged. And likewise, Christ is using the same parallel, that there will be another nation. There will be a Gentile nation in prophecy that will bring forth the fruits. And so we've looked at the parallel of the Christians who are within the land of America, strangers within this land, but now we've reached 400 years and following that same parallel that we see with Abraham and God told him you would have children through faith. And so that same parallel of 400 years, your children will be in a land that is not theirs for 400 years and then their land will be judged. We apparently see that same parallel right in context of the peace and safety warnings given out in that same country of America in the 400th year. Understanding that there are pilgrims and strangers there in that same country. But the emphasis on fruit, which is why the Lord has also brought our attention to the New Year for Trees, which is generally around January and February, the beginning of the year, that's when the trees start waking up. And so we can see a very close parallel between all these years, 2020, 2021, 2022, and now 2023 would be the fourth year. Understanding our Lord is looking for fruit. When he looks primarily at America, the prophesied nation, he looks at Christian Americans most especially. We have the most responsibility because we have been given far more than many other nations down through time in history. The past 400 years, we have so much more opportunities. And so much more will be required of us Christian Americans, I'm afraid, because we have had so many more opportunities. But even today, we still have opportunities to bring forth fruit, much fruit. 
And that's what Jesus Christ emphasized at the Last Supper. He desires that we bring forth much fruit. And when we do so, then we will be his disciples. There is a difference between those who like Jesus Christ and those who are disciples of Jesus Christ. Our Lord is looking for fruit, and he's holding back judgment so that we can bring forth more fruit, so that his bride can echo his heart and bring forth more fruit. And then we saw in February 2022 when Jupiter was at the water stream of Aquarius, also again reminding us what's on the last page of the Bible, that's when Russia invaded Ukraine and the peace and safety calls went out. We are running out of time to do our job as fishers and men. And that is when the talk really hit the world stage of the concept of sudden destruction. And it's especially been escalating since then with Russia and NATO, EU, but also the same escalation with China and Taiwan, but also North Korea. All those actors on the world stage, all those situations, those potential conflicts all spilling out at the same time, potentially. We see all that, especially with the geopolitical aligning of the actors on the West and the East. We see a separation. We see them becoming more at loggerheads with each other as well, too. We can see how they're scripting things, so it's all plausible. And we also see in a few weeks that Jupiter, the king, will be at the midst of Aries, the lamb, on September 4th, 2023. That is when Jupiter will finally come to station one. That's when it will stop moving toward the left, pause for about two weeks. Jupiter will stand still at that point for about two weeks. Peaking around September 4th, Jupiter will be standing still at that point right around then, the beginning of September, which reminds us of the same parallel in the account of the wise men, the first page of the New Testament, where they saw the star standing. And they knew they were at a very important spot where they were about to meet the king. And so as we see us also approaching that same visual representation where Jupiter is leaving the celestial sea, finally arriving at a land animal, Aries, the lamb, we're also seeing in the news the transfer of nuclear weapons to Belarus, the counteroffensive in Ukraine failing, the density of Ukrainian forces failing, the need for desperate action if Russia is to be halted. And so we see a certain escalation, a certain scripting where things are heading, understanding that the event started with Sagittarius and that the enemy was aware of what the celestial clock was showing with the crown. The enemy knows things will be held at bay, but they are of one mind and they intend to give a crown to the beast who is rising up out of the bottomless pit. That is why all the world governments, even with all their differences, still acted on the same script with the COVID scare. Because they are all of one mind, ultimately, and they will force through their efforts, which have also played into the Ukrainian conflict with the aligning of the world east and west as well, too. So they've really been pulling out the stops since 2020. That is when things really started being set into irreversible motion. And we're approaching, apparently, a point where they understand the one who started those events, Sagittarius. There was going to be a pause. But the same one is also going to release those judgments. The Lamb of God, when he opens the seal, he will be the same one who releases the judgments against the adversary. The sudden destruction is apparently tied toward both of those. The start and the end which includes the same person, the Lamb of God, is the one who's going to be releasing those judgments. And so we don't know exactly for sure, but it does appear that the enemy is scripting the different acts of their play for the final act now that Jupiter is reaching and going to be standing still at Aries the Lamb. In just a couple weeks, we can see how things are certainly staggered out to be ending apparently at this time, ending with Jupiter the King, pointing at the one who is the king, the Lamb of God, who sits at the right hand of the throne of God. And so by looking at the celestial clock, when we look up and we lift up our heads, this does appear to give us the best granular information of looking at it from a biblical perspective, what's on the last page of the Bible, the expectation for what is about to start. So friend, as you reflect what has happened since 2020, I want you to especially remember the celestial learning journey that the Lord has brought us on. He has brought us on a personalized learning journey where he has held our hand. He has showed us not just astronomical information, but he's shown us in a personalized way, taking us out into many field trips, showing us things in the celestial heavens. He's made it personal to us on the celestial learning journey. As we desire to draw nigh to him, we can experience a personalized learning journey, a personalized insight. He can give wisdom. 
He can show us things from his word that are there and plainly, but he can show us the connections because we can experience a tangibleness and reality, a presence of the Spirit working in our lives when we allow Him to work in our lives. If we quench the Spirit, we won't have that quickening. We won't have that insight. We won't have Him working and bringing things to remembrance about Scripture and what He has said. It is only by allowing the Spirit free reign in our heart and life, free reign over our hands and feet, our actions, our heart, are all drawing nigh to Him with the true heart. And placing the scepter of our life into his hand and say, Yes, Lord. Only then can he show us incredible things. He has shown us so much about the celestial clock. Shown us how all this weaves together. The beautiful tapestry of what the heavens declare. And friend, that is what our beloved desires. He desires that we have an ear to hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And he has shown us so many reminders along the celestial learning journey that he wants us to hear. He wants us to draw nigh to him with a true heart. We are at a very special time. We are at a very special place. We are on a special learning journey with our beloved. With our beloved. He desires us to hear. He desires us to draw nigh to him. We are running out of time. This is the repeated emphasis that he has been showing us. He is the one who wants us to look up and lift up our heads. Because these celestial signs are for us. We are the ones who need to hear the Spirit. We need to hear what the Spirit echoes, so that way we can echo the Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. But if we cannot hear the Spirit, if we cannot understand what the celestial elements are declaring, if we do not see, and you know, we are not tender to the heart of our beloved, we will not be able to echo Him. And we will not echo Him. All these messages are for us. Therefore, the church first. And that's why the letters were written to the churches. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The Spirit desires us to echo him. Does the Spirit hear us echoing him? He has shown us so many things about his heart. He desires fruit. We've been shown the fields are white into harvest during this time where he is holding back the bow, holding back the wrath demonstrating mercy during this time. Right at the same time with his other hand, he is bringing us along a special learning journey in tangible, insightful ways, showing us his heart and wondering if our heart echoes his heart. We are running out of time. Even the enemy, even the children of darkness knows we are running out of time. Sun destruction is coming and it is all apparently pegged toward fruit. And so as I've been considering the sudden destruction, this escalation, just seeing it reached apparently a final act, and then also consider the celestial path, the tapestry that our Redeemer has shown us, we are running out of time for the harvest. We are running out of time that we should be redeeming. Are we doing that? And so as I remember just the celestial learning journey of Jupiter going through Capricornus and Aquarius and Pisces and Fomalhaut, a southern fish, and just everything that the Lord has shown us since 2020, particularly with the tangible work that he was doing here in our own lives, just showing us the reality of the time, showing us the reality of his heart. It's definitely been a trip down memory lane the past few days, just seeing how he has interwoven all these together. And it is by going forward in faith with our hands and feet, responding to the Spirit, we can have a greater insight to what he's trying to show us. And so praise the Lord, he gave wisdom to examine and look at different parallels. Now that we see an escalation of peace and safety, he had me stack together the years of 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. And right now we are in the latter part of June. We are quickly approaching the dog days of summer, though, which are going to start in approximately the midst of July. And will run for about 40 days, approximately, depending on your latitude. But approximately around the midst of July, that's when they start. That is when the days are extra, extra hot. And of course, this brings to mind what Jesus Christ used the parallels of the trees putting forth. You know, that is a sign that summer is drawing nigh. And of course, there's different ways to measure the start of summer. Just our Gregorian understanding is June, July, and August. On the Hebrew months, that would be the fourth month, fifth month, and sixth month. But then there's also the understanding that there is a distinct part of the year that was well known in ancient times, the dog days of summer, when it's the hottest. And following the same parallel where he's comparing early springtime with another season in the midst of summer when it's hot. 
When you see the trees put forth, you know that it's going to be hot very soon. It's not hot in spring, but the hot time of the year is coming up. And so in one way, I highly suspect that he's pointing to the dog days of summer because that is a distinct astronomical time of the year. It happens at the exact same time every single year, and that is when Sirius rises as the bright and morning star. Now, it depends a little bit on your latitude, exactly what day that is, but generally it's around August 8th. And that is recognized as the center of the dog days of summer. You'll have about 20 days before that, 20 days after that. Approximately 40 days are dog days of summer. And they called it the dog days of summer because that is when Sirius was rising with the sun. And they just thought that Sirius looked like a very fiery star. And so when you have a very fiery star rising at the same time as a very fiery sun, you have that extra heat. And so that's why they thought those days were extra hot. And of course, Sirius is in the dog constellation. So that's why it got the name Dog Days of Summer. It's just an astronomical observance that anyone can see if they happen to be looking up and lifting up their heads at that time. That Sirius would be rising at that same time with the sun. And really, for the ancient person, Sirius rising as a bright morning star, that was the peak of summer, because that was literally when it was hottest. Not the summer solstice, but when Sirius rises as a bright morning star. That's really the peak temperature time of summer. But it would also happen at exactly the same time every single year, too. So you can look up on the celestial clock and know exactly when that is, when they regarded that summer has now arrived. And that is the parallel that Jesus was using with the trees putting forth the arrival. There will be signs that point to something else coming up. The budding will point to summer coming up. Likewise, there will be prophetic events pointing to Christ's coming. And so when we see a specific celestial event that's also mentioned on the last page of the Bible, the bright and morning star that Jesus Christ associates with himself, that points to a very short window of time on the celestial clock, which catches our attention. We also understand that the fruit season that he was also pointing to and talking about, that happens pretty much the next month. That is the sixth month on the Hebrew calendar, which is also the last month of the Hebrew summer, too. So when we consider the parallels of the parable that Jesus Christ used of looking three years for fruit on a fig tree, and one final year of grace, the fourth year he expected to find fruit on that tree. In the fourth year. And that final fourth fig fruit season would happen right overlapping with the dog days of summer too. Right in that window. So a lot should catch our attention when we consider four fig fruit seasons. Vernal equinox is in the spring, obviously, when the sun is at Pisces. But then the autumnal equinox is when the sun is at Virgo, right between Virgo and Leo. But that gives you a very good idea the agricultural season between the vernal equinox approximately and autumnal equinox. That's when it's ramping up and then ramping down. And so again, this brings up the parallels of the parable that Jesus Christ said about looking for fruit. But also Joseph, remember with the seven cows. We've been looking at the parallels of the seven good years followed by seven bad years. And we have the expectation that the seven bad years representative should be starting any day now. With an understanding of those cows that the seven bad years, there was an offset. It all started within two years after the dream was given. So there's an offset of less than two years. It happened within the second year of his reign. So we see that same expectation around the turn of the year. And there's two turns of the year. There's the vernal equinox and the autumnal equinox. And in between those two is the agricultural season. So, with the seven cows parallel, we were looking very much at the vernal equinox and understanding the grain harvest was around there. But we also understand, and mentioned this in our last video, that there are other lesser harvests between the grain harvest and the autumnal equinox. And then the olives fall a little bit after that too. But pretty much all the harvests are wrapped up by the Feast of Tabernacles because that was their version of Thanksgiving. And so there is, again, just looking at this, the expectation that the seven representative parallel years of famine should start sometime after the autumnal equinox. And the figs are the last fruit of the summer. They are summer fruits. And so there's multiple things just by looking at this that we should have an understanding that there should be a reckoning. But we're still in all these parallels somewhere around the dog days of summer and the autumnal equinox. 
when summer ends, when that last sixth month ends, because that's the last looking at the figs for fruit. We also understand the new year for trees. It happens around January, sometimes early February, right in that window. And we've also seen a distinct parallel with the enemy activity too. New year for trees is when the almond trees start waking up. They're the very first trees to start waking up. And then the figs are following not too far after that. But almond means watch, wake up. And so we've looked at those parallels too. Understanding in 2020, we were told to wake up, to watch, to be sober, because that's when the peace and safety calls were going out. That is when Jupiter the king was at Sagittarius, holding back the bow. Not releasing it yet, but understanding, yes, things are under tension. And that is when, again, the peace and safety calls went out. And so the Lord was emphasizing, yes, sudden destruction is coming. You have the expectation now. There is a tension now. The corona events were going on now. There is a distinct tension that, yes, things have been set into motion. And yet, our Lord is restraining those events from starting. The restrainer is holding them back for just a little longer. Just a little longer because he desires fruit. The Lord demonstrated that so clearly before us on the celestial learning journey. Tangibly acted out a pattern for us to watch and examine, see the Lord working in our own lives here on this learning journey. That, that's what he desires. He desires fruit. He desires faithfulness. That's what he's demonstrated all along this learning journey. And then that same year, the great conjunction, be reminded we're running out of time. We're running out of valuable time. A time where we know our Redeemer is holding back the bow. Holding it back for just a little longer. Are we redeeming the time? Are we redeeming the opportunities that he is showing us? And also at the same time, reminding us, bringing it very close to home. Yes, there is another nation. There is another prophecy going on. There is another timetable. You've just reached 400 years. Judgment is about to come on that nation where those strangers and pilgrims are. And the whole reason why that other nation has been given such liberty is because I desire fruit. And in early 2021, we saw that the enemy was fully aware of the 400 years of prophecy, this parallel with Joseph and Abraham, all these parallels that we've been looking at. The enemy is fully aware. The children of darkness are fully aware what time it is. And they are also aware that our Redeemer is holding back the bow just a little longer. That he is looking for fruit, especially over these four years. He is looking for fruit because we know the most. He has shown us so much wisdom. Here in this modern time, we have been given abundant liberty and opportunity by all the technological advances, the insights, the astronomical tools that we have, the ability to understand geopolitical events happening around the world within hours. He has shown us so much. We have so much understanding of where we are and what are we doing with it. The children of darkness know what time it is. They know well what time it is. That same year was when the Joel warning went out, when the heavens said, this is a sign that you will see before the great and terrible day of the Lord had come, when he will fully release his judgments against the adversary. You already know that tension is building. You already know he is about to release that. You are running on very precious time. Redeem it. In early 2022, that is when we heard the UN security calls of peace and safety. Russia invaded Ukraine, and things have only escalated since then. But as that same year, the blood moon that we saw at Scorpius, the adversary, the very adversary that Sagittarius is pointing his arrow at, it's Scorpius. And it was that same constellation that the sun turned into blackness at, at the Joel's warning, back in December of 2021. The heavens keep pointing and reminding us he's holding back the bow. He's holding back the bow, church, but not for much longer. That same year, the blood moon also appeared right in line with Pleiades. The Lord brought our attention again to it. Look up. I want to see, do my churches have an ear to hear what I'm trying to show them? I'm trying to show you my heart. I'm trying to show you my heart. And in just a few weeks, we see Sirius rising as the bright and morning star. Also, just a few weeks after that is when Jupiter comes to a standstill right at the Lamb of God right on the other side of the celestial sea. The Lamb of God who is the King, who is the one who sits at the right hand of the throne of God, who is the same one who's going to be opening the seal and finally releasing the judgments against his adversary. The bright and morning star. 
the root of David, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right in the month when the sun is also pointing at Leo the Lion, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. The celestial pictures portrayed on the last page of the Bible exemplified in a way like no other. Apparently a conclusion to a timing when the restrainer no longer restrains. We do not know the day or hour, but we can look up, we can lift up our heads, and we should have an expectation that we are running out of time to do our job. A time, a window of opportunity, a window of mercy and grace where he has restrained what he has said he is going to do. And as a righteous judge, he must do it one day. But there is a window of opportunity where he has rehearsed the tapestry of redemption, our redemption. And the Spirit is listening. Does your heart echo my heart? Does your heart echo my heart? The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And we are at a time where Jupiter is even now at Aries the Ram, knowing that in a few weeks he'll come to a complete standstill right at the feet of the Lamb. We also understand that's going to be near the time when Sirius is rising as the bright and morning star. Sirius is the star which has the idea of coming quickly, an idea of swiftness, coming quickly. The prince, the leader and prince of the heavenly hosts, reminding us so beautifully what's on the last page of the Bible. It's a promise, but it's also a warning. Bride, echo my heart, because I am coming quickly. Now, it depends on what your latitude is, but if you're in Jerusalem, somewhere around the 2nd of August, because you're at a lower latitude there in Jerusalem, you will see Sirius start rising as a morning star around the beginning of August, rising in the dog constellation right in line with Orion and Pleiades, reminding us of the seven churches where the bright and morning star wrote letters to them. Do you have an ear to hear? Can you hear? Can you be moved? right when Jupiter is at Aries. But if you go up a little higher in latitude to that of Turkey, where the seven churches were located, somewhere around the 8th of August, 8 and 8, 88, that is generally when Sirius is visible to the naked eye, rising as a morning star then. And a guide to help you find it is the Belt of Orion and Aldebaran there in Taurus. Just follow that and they'll give you an idea where to look for Sirius. Also, just follow Pleiades and Orion down, and that will point in that general direction too. Jupiter, the king planet, right at Aries, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, right with the bright and morning star. The bright and morning star, because what is happening? The sun is rising, and where is the sun? The sun is obviously, you'll be able to see it's near Cancer, but it's about to leave Cancer, entering into Leo. Leo the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah, right when Jupiter the king is pointing to the Lamb of God and the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right as the bright and morning star is chiming out on the clock, all this at the same time that the sun, as a bridegroom, is at the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Just a few days after that, about the 12th of August, that's when Venus is going to be in line with the sun at Leo also, a bride and a bridegroom with the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right when the king is at the Lamb of God, right when this bright and morning star is rising more and more brilliantly, coming onto the scene very quickly. And Sirius rises very quickly as the days progress because it's offset from the ecliptic. It has a smaller circle of rotation, so it rises quicker as the morning star every single day. We see such a beautiful portrayal coming together, a choreography, a handiwork, a speech. These words which are found on the last page of the Bible. Chapter 22 of Revelation, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And as you look up, you'll be able to see the celestial sea in the morning, right as Sirius is rising, the bright morning star, the celestial sea, Aquarius, pouring out the living water, right as the king planet is pointing to the Lamb of God, because the Lamb sits at the throne of God, and of the Lamb. It's the Lamb's throne too. The throne of God and of the Lamb. Beautiful portrayal now that Jupiter has finally reached the Lamb. The King is now pointing at the Lamb. They need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. The Bridegroom is the one who gives them light, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Behold, I come quickly, 
right at the celestial time when Sirius is rising as the bright and morning star when it's chiming out. I'm here, I'm rising. This is the time when the bright and morning star, which is known for coming quickly. And here it rings out on the celestial clock. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. He is royalty of the line of David. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is also the bright and morning star, and just as John the Baptist introduced him, he is the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God is also recorded in the book of Revelation. I am both the promised Lamb of God, the offspring that would spring out of Judah, of David, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, but also the Lamb of God, the Lion and the Lamb, and the Bride and Morning Star, and the Spirit, and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. These beautiful pictures, the sun as a bridegroom, right with Venus also in the scene, a bride and a bridegroom with the Lamb of God, Aquarius pouring out the living water, also reminders of time pointing back to 2020, pouring out the water for the fish, right as Jupiter is at Aries the Lamb who came to redeem the fish. Our beloved came to redeem the fish. All these pictures so beautifully exemplified on the celestial clock, ringing out a time, a speech, that do we hear it? Do we hear what the heavens declare about the time? Do we hear what the heavens declare about how he desires fruit? Do we hear what the heavens declare about how he is restraining what is about to come? Do we hear his desire for fruit? Do we hear his heart? Does our heart echo his heart? These are the questions we should be asking ourselves along the celestial learning journey, knowing that we are the ones running out of time. And as we reflect on the learning journey that the Lord has brought us on, seeing significant celestial markers in just a few weeks and days, seeing important seasons for fruit in just a few weeks and days, seeing celestial markers of the Lamb of God in just a few weeks and days, are we reflecting on all that He has shown us, on all that He has tried to make us hear, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man, the Lamb of God.